breaking tonight, there was no collusion. Where's the media? A bipartisan committee of Senate Democrats and Republicans found zero evidence of wrongdoing by the Trump campaign. Now, we're going to bring you all the details coming up, along with several other important deep state updates, including now criminal referrals, finally, for FISA abuse. Oh, and other people like on the left actually lied to Congress, too. When will they get, be getting their pre uh, dawn raids with uh, 27 people and amphibious vehicles, full-on gear. But first, we need to tackle the what is a garbage new compromise, supposedly, surrounding border security. In tonight's Hannity Watch on building the wall and keeping the government open. So we have a bipartisan congressional committee. They have agreed to allocate a whopping oh, $1.375 billion for new border wall construction. Now that pales in comparison to the president's request for $5.7 billion, but would fund approximately 55 miles of new wall construction on a border that is 2,000 miles long. And we haven't seen the language, nor has the White House. Sources are telling me that it's still being worked out. But if Democrats are going to put a lot of restrictions on wall construction, in other words, that it's not really wall money, this is not a bill the president will be able to sign. He will then need a clean CR. Earlier today, here is how the president responded to the initial details of this new budget deal. Take a look. Sir, will you sign Congress's border deal? I have to study it. I'm not happy about it. It's not doing the trick, but I'm adding things to it. And when you add whatever I have to add, uh, it's all, it's all going to happen where we're going to build a beautiful, big, strong wall that's not going to let criminals and traffickers and drug dealers and drugs into our country. It's very simple. So uh, I can tell you that, uh, am I happy at first glance? I just got to see it. The answer is no, I'm not. I'm not happy. I'm not happy either. Nobody should be happy. The president has every right to be angry. The so-called compromise is typical of the D.C. sewer and swamp, and its level of funding for security and safety of the American people is pathetic. It's almost as if lawmakers in Washington, from the comfort of their own oh, walled homes, they don't realize the horrors of sex trafficking, even young girls put into prostitution, human trafficking. The drug trafficking, 90% of our heroin comes across that southern border. It occurs every single day of every week of every month of every year. It's almost as if they just don't care. In the past two years alone, criminal, illegal aliens have been responsible for 100,000 assault charges, 30,000 sexual assault crimes, and 4,000 murders and homicides. It's as if they don't care. And that yesterday, by the way, 330 illegal immigrants, including many unaccompanied minors, were apprehended west of El Paso, where there's no border wall. It's almost as if they don't care about the angel moms and dads that we have interviewed on this very show. Children, their kids, senselessly taken by people who crossed their lives, taken by people that crossed these borders illegally. Have any Democrats actually called any of the families of these victims? Now, it would be perfectly reasonable for President Trump to reject this bill. Now, there's another solution, maybe even a better solution. I'm not as concerned as some other conservatives if the president signs the bill, but there's a couple of ifs. Step one, president decides he wants to sign the compromise, which would guarantee the $1.375 billion down payment for the wall. Okay, that money can be used immediately. Now, if he takes step two, which is the president utilizing monies identified, some $900 million for additional construction that is already available for the administration's discretion. That would be about $2.3 billion, but the important third step needs to happen simultaneously. And that would be the president would need to declare a national emergency. This is the time. That is a necessity. And the president, I think I know him pretty well, telegraphed that very thing just today. You just heard him indicate a coming plan that he would find the other monies on top of whatever Congress gives him. Now that would allow the administration to access billions more in wall funding. And by the way, the national emergency would be challenged as we always see with the Democrats. They'll go judge shopping in California or Oregon or Hawaii. Then they'll go to the Ninth Circuit. And then because of all the constitutional issues involved, being number one an emergency, separation of powers, the president's role as our commander in chief, I think the president is on very firm legal grounds given the national security risks that are stemming 
from a poor southern border. And additionally, the president has even further authority, which the Supreme Court, I'm sure, would look at. And that would be a real law, 10 U.S.C. 284. That gives the president, in other words, the executive branch, the authority for the construction of roads and fences and the installation of lighting to block drug smuggling corridors across international boundaries of the United States. Now, despite what the haters on both sides of the aisle are telling you, remember before 2016, I always shoot straight with you. I've known this president for over two decades. And I told everybody, went out on a limb and said he is going to keep his promises and that he'd govern as a conservative and that he would work tirelessly to improve the country. Well, let's see, the biggest tax cuts and the burdensome regulation. He's too originalist on the Supreme Court. Yeah, I was right. The haters, the never Trumpers were wrong. And that's exactly what he's done. And I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be any different with securing our nation's borders. He is tenacious, and he will fight to get that wall built. And guess what? The vast majority of the American people, well, look at the CBS News poll. They support him. Seventy-two percent of Americans agree with the president and his policies on immigration. And by the way, some good news breaking also tonight. The president just tweeted, quote, was just presented the concept and parameters of the border security deal. We'll be getting... Almost $23 billion for border security, regardless of what they give us, meaning Congress, wall money. It is being built as we speak. Let me interpret that for members of Congress and the hate Trump media. Sounds like a national emergency is going to be declared, but I have no insider information. So Democrats have agreed to over $1.3 billion, uh, for, and billions, by the way, more for border security. And Democrats are now agreeing to fund something, by the way. This is amazing, because... They were for referring to building walls as immoral just a short time ago. Now they're funding these immoral behaviors. Watch this. We know that walls do not save lives. Walls end lives. We are aghast that he wants this giant 30-foot wall to be the symbol of America. I tell President Trump, I've told him to his face. We want the symbol of America to remain the Statue of Liberty, freedom, equality, not a divisive wall. I don't support a wall. I believe in border security. I think a wall is not a smart way to make us safer. A wall is an immorality. It's not who we are as a nation. Chuck Schumer and all the Democrats supported that wall in the second term of Barack Obama. But now that Trump wants it, ah, they can't support anything Trump wants. Notice that old Bozo O'Rourke down in El Paso actually said that walls make us less safe and end lives. Wow. Maybe someone should warn Americans about the serial killer walls making us less safe today. Thank you, Bozo, for your important input and your warning. But guess what? It gets even more absurd. Many on the left have recently referred to border security efforts as racist. Watch this. Foundation of the wall is hate. It's fear. Yep. It becomes fear of the other. And then it becomes fear of brown people. And it becomes fear of caravans and fear of invasions and fear of MS-13. Blatantly attempt to stir up fear of people of color, of brown people. Nah, it has nothing to do with the fact that Many Americans have been murdered and there's sexual assaults and there's, you know, all sorts of violent assaults and heroin, 90 percent of it coming into our country. And we have uh, an opioid epidemic. Really, we're going to play the race card here. And I'll grant you, 98 percent of the people that cross that border illegally just want a better life, that which we take for granted as Americans. But playing politics with safety, security, even life and death. Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of America's now radical, extreme, new socialist Democratic Party. Kind of like when Senator Bob Menendez was scolding the president for criminalizing illegal immigrants who actually drink and drive. Watch this. The president's uh, zero tolerance policy that has turned everyone, regardless uh, of their uh, record, uh, into a criminal. For example, if you cross the border undocumented, he has now made you a criminal. Uh, he is creating that problem by turning people away who legitimately seek asylum. If a person has a driving while under the influence violation, he is now making that, saying that that's a criminal. 
if they come in illegally, uh, they broke the law. By the way, it's part of the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Drunk drivers kill people every day. Senator, maybe talk to mothers against drunk driving or talk to a parent who has lost a child killed by a, a drunk driver. You know, for the Democrats, this is all one big political game. Life and death, safety, security. These people need to meet these angel moms and dads and kids killed by drunk drivers. They really need an intervention. Uh, sadly, the only thing they care about is keeping the government open, making the president look bad, even denying DACA and Dreamers things they say they want, and helping furloughed employees. No, nothing trumps hating Trump. The president fighting a life and death battle. Democrats are fighting for virtually nothing here except that which they supported a couple of years ago. The president now has rightly made protecting our nation's borders and preserving American life his number one priority. We all know the statistics. Radical Socialist Democrats, they're calling walls immoral. They now advocate even for infanticide during the birth process, nine months into pregnancy, calling for a ban of most forms of electricity, the lifeblood of our economy, fossil fuels, pushing an end to the consumption of meat because cows and flatulence, and yeah, being associated with some of the most bigoted, hateful anti-Semites in the country. This party, Democratic Extreme Radical Socialist Party, is a real-life dumpster fire. It's unfolding before our eyes. I told you this would happen. And tonight, by the way, we start with our Hannity watch on these extreme socialists. And, of course, starting with Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her insane Green New Deal being supported by some of the most prominent Democrats in her party. Last night, President Trump called them out in a huge way. Let's take a look. They introduced a massive government takeover that would destroy our incredible economic gains. They introduced the so-called Green New Deal. It sounds like a high school term paper that got a low mark. It would shut down American energy, which I don't think the people in Texas are going to be happy with that. FoxNews.com, a new article this evening, even left-leaning union leaders, they're now warning that this Green New Deal will lead to poverty. They would like to work and provide for their families. And let's not forget that 2020 candidate, Senator Spartacus himself, Cory Booker, quickly threw his support behind Socialist Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's absurd Green New Deal, which calls for an end to all fossil fuels. Oh, we're going to eliminate airplanes, and we're going to have high-speed rail. How are we going to get to Europe, Australia, New Zealand, trucks, even banning cows? Okay, they've lost their minds. And Booker, by the way, who is an admitted vegan, Get this. I, I don't make this stuff up either. He's trying to justify this insanity, this platform, telling a vegan magazine, this world cannot sustain people eating meat. Only rich people he talks about eating meat. Are Democrats really trying to take the White House on a platform of banning meat, airplanes, fossil fuels, oh, and rebuilding every house in America? The same party that is now for infanticide, the same party that won't stand up to what happened to, I believe, oh, even sexual assault allegations and a rape allegation, if it's a member of their own party, many of them won't say, I believe now. Don't take my word for it in the case of Booker. He recently compared tackling the scourge of cow flatulence and other forms of carbon pollutants to our efforts during World War II. This would be a joke, but they're serious. So lock your freezers, save your meat now. You may need it. It will be very valuable, a great investment for years to come. And now even Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell rightly planning to put other Democrats on record. He wants a vote on the Green New Deal. Good going, Mitch. I want to see if it passes. Let's see where the Democrats vote here, because it will tell you everything on paper, just how radical and extreme the Socialist Party has now become. Rampant socialism, which guarantees, oh, a job, a vacation, uh, housing, health care, Oh, it'll take away your private insurance uh, and everything else that it promises to do, whether you're willing or unwilling to work, is not only 
cons the concerning ideology and the rise of the Democratic Party, now another scary form of extremism is not going away. And that is the rise of anti-Semitism in the halls of Congress. Recently, far-left Democratic Congresswoman Omar made a series of disturbing anti-Semitic tweets while spreading an anti-Israel conspiracy theory, apologizing only for that one for offending Jewish people, but she's retaining her position. Get this, on the Foreign Affairs Committee, President Trump tonight calling on her to resign. But known anti-Semite Linda Sarsour, remember her? She's rushing to Congresswoman Omar's defense. No surprise there. Linda Sarsour is a friend of Kirsten Gillibrand, running for president. We're going to keep you posted on the bigotry of the left every single night and hold these people accountable, and we'll have our Hannity watch regularly. Now we turn to some other breaking news tonight. President Trump tweeted a big thank you to Conspiracy Theory TV MSNBC, who was forced to come clean about their Russia collusion conspiracy theories, which they've been peddling for two straight years. When's that apology coming? Take a look. After two years and interviewing more than 200 witnesses, the Senate Intelligence Committee has not uncovered any direct evidence of a conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russia. That's according to sources on both the Republican and the Democratic side of the aisle. If and when the president, as he may inevitably do, point to this reporting, point to these conclusions and say, look, the Senate Intelligence Committee found that I am not guilty of conspiracy, he, he would be correct in saying that? Well, except, except the, the use of the term not guilty is not really appropriate because they're right. not a court of law. That said, Trump will cl claim vindication through this and he will be partially right. That's right. You, he you heard it right. The bipartisan Senate committee, Republicans and Democrats, investigating campaign fraud. No evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. None. Including Democrats. And they have seen everything Mueller has seen. Now, of course, we've been telling you this for months and months and months. The left have been force-feeding with hysterical coverage the American people a steady diet of insane, bizarre, lying conspiracy theories every night. Just to remind you, take a look. What do you got hard? Well, Chris, yeah, Chris unfortunately, I can't go into the evidence that's uh, being presented. Do you presented have something hard that you can't reveal? Uh, you know, I can't uh, reveal that, Chris. I certainly say with confidence that there is significant evidence of collusion uh, between the campaign and Russia. Vladimir Putin and his associates, somebody has something on Donald Trump. As we are looking at the possibility that the President of the United States and those around him during an election campaign colluded with a hostile foreign power to undermine the basis of our democracy. It's so obvious that they were eager to collude with Russia. Now we're seeing the evidence that there was a conspiracy to cover up. This is evidence of willingness to commit collusion. There's outright treason. I mean, there is no question uh, that what he is doing is giving aid and comfort to the enemy. Is there any evidence of collusion that you have seen yet? Is there? There is a lot of smoke. We have no smoking gun at this point. Now, we have a lot more coming up, including criminal referrals on FISA and lying to Congress. Except maybe this time the pre-dawn raid will be at a Democrat's house. Thank <laughs> you.